Throughout NBA history, few first round playoff series have ever been as highly anticipated as the 1998 showdown between the Miami Heat and New York Knicks. After all, hostility had been festering between the two rivals since the year prior, when they did battle, literally and figuratively, in an unforgettable Eastern Conference semifinal matchup. But the playoff rematch between Miami and New York proved to be more vicious than anyone could have anticipated, and ultimately produced one of the most iconic brawls and unforgettable scenes in NBA history. Throughout the 1990s, the historic greatness of Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls obscured the fact that both the Heat and Knicks had established themselves as formidable Eastern Conference powers by the second half of the decade. In fact, when they tussled in the postseason for the first time in 97, the Heat and Knicks had finished second and third respectively in the Eastern Conference, a distant second and third, of course, behind Chicago. Still, the Ascendant Heat set a then-franchise record that year with 61 wins, capturing their first ever Atlantic Division title in just their second season under head coach Pat Riley. The same Riley who'd left for Miami under dubious circumstances after four fruitless seasons and amid mounting frustration in New York. Under Riley, a talented Heat roster anchored by Alonzo Mourning and Tim Hardaway transformed into the league's best defensive team, evoking the tenacious, bruising style of play that had defined the Riley-led Knicks. That said, the Knicks were still plenty tough under Riley protege Jeff Van Gundy. In 96-97, franchise cornerstone Patrick Ewing and a revamped supporting cast earned 57 wins and the team's 10th consecutive playoff berth. And along the way, relations between these two division rivals grew increasingly hostile. Familiarity breeds contempt after all, and the Heat and Knicks were almost mirror images of one another, stylistically and spiritually, each with their own Hall of Fame bound big man out of Georgetown to boot. On top of that, there was also beef between Morning and the Knicks' Larry Johnson that stretched back to their days as teammates in Charlotte. The bottom line? These two teams hated one another. As Heat forward PJ Brown put it following an April loss to the Knicks, I dislike them more than any team in the league. Everyone in this locker room feels that way. And when New York and Miami met months later in the conference semis, it got pretty hot. After the Knicks stormed out to a 3-1 lead in a decidedly testy series, tensions boiled over in the closing moments of Miami's Game 5 victory, when Brown flipped an aggressive Charlie Ward into a cameraman, igniting a full-on brawl. If you look at the film, it clearly shows that Charlie Ward was uh, trying to go out to my knees. I was boxing out like I usually do on our free throws, and you know they're saying I'm trying to take out his knees, which is not true. He was not trying to do a normal block out. He was just trying to take me out and uh, trying to play football, and uh, I just protected myself and picked him up and, and uh, got the man off my knees. The incident resulted in six players getting suspended, five of them Knicks players, several of whom flew off the bench to join the melee. In the end, Ewing and Allen Houston, New York's two leading scorers, were suspended along with Ward for Game 6, while John Starks and Johnson were suspended for Game 7. The punishment was so severe, so devastating to the Knicks' chances, that the NBPA filed an injunction in federal court to get the suspensions delayed, but the league's ruling was upheld. And ultimately, with the Knicks lineup decimated by the most robust discipline in postseason history, the Heat snatched victory from the jaws of defeat, taking Game 6 at Madison Square Garden before cruising to a series-clinching Game 7 win in Miami behind a sensational Hardaway. Naturally, Miami would go on to lose to Jordan's Bulls in five games in the conference finals. And the devastation in New York was palpable. The Knicks, as Houston described years later, felt that the league had taken that series away from them and handed it to Miami. In Ewing's mind, that team represented the Knicks' best shot for a title in his time with them, and that includes the 94 team that came within one win of an NBA championship. And the Knicks' resentment towards Miami only intensified as the 97-98 campaign unfolded. After effectively running it back following their gut-wrenching collapse, the Knicks lost Ewing, their linchpin, to a season-ending wrist injury days before Christmas. In his absence, the Knicks struggled to play 500 basketball while the Heat ran away with the Atlantic Division. For a second year in a row, the Heat finished second in the Eastern Conference and ended up a dozen wins ahead of the Knicks, who won consecutive games only once over the final six weeks of the regular season. Still, at 43-39, and 39, they just managed to sneak into the playoffs. In fact, as fate would have it, despite finishing with the same record as the New Jersey Nets, the Knicks secured the number seven seed in the East, which meant that their first round opponent would be none other than their newfound nemesis, 
Rematch time. Heat Nick's round two was gonna be a dogfight for the ages, and everyone knew it. Even Ewing's continuing absence couldn't diminish the anticipation and intensity. Ahead of the series, Van Gundy even admitted that he was worried about his team's ability to stay poised. Soon enough, his concerns would be validated, and he'd be caught in the middle of it. At first, however, it looked like the series might actually be a dud. In game one in Miami, the Heat barely broke a sweat, taking a 20-point lead into halftime and cruising to a commanding victory. But the Knicks responded with a mighty counterpunch two nights later, evening the series at one game apiece behind a team-high 25 points from Starks off the bench. However, back at the Garden for Game 3, Vashawn Leonard and Hardaway propelled Miami to a 91-85 victory that put New York on the brink of a second straight postseason elimination at the hands of the Heat. Before that could happen though, all hell broke loose. In the dying seconds of Game 4, with the Knicks about to lock up a series-extending victory, Morning and Johnson, the former teammates turned enemies, got tangled up around the Knicks' basket. Before you could say Game 5, punches started flying and the court descended into pure bedlam. Rebound New York! And Fister flying at the other end! Larry Johnson is one of them! Here we go. Oakley and Morning have at each other! And both of those guys will not play in game five. I guarantee you that. Van Gundy out. I don't know if it was Oakley. I, I couldn't see. I saw Johnson throwing punches. I think it was Larry Johnson. One year after a brawl changed the complexion of their playoff series, the Heat and Knicks outdid themselves, authoring a melee on par with almost any other in NBA history. Funnily enough, the boxing match between Morning and Johnson that started the whole thing was actually a total laugher, with neither combatant landing a single punch. Angelo Morning throws the first punch. Well, there's one right there, and that's what got him going. And then the push back, and then there's the punch. Fortunately for these guys, they are both awful fighters. Ultimately though, the focal point of that brawl wasn't Morning or Johnson or Charles Oakley or Hardaway. It was none other than Van Gundy, who ran into the fray to try to break things up and ended up hanging onto Morning's leg, the leg of an opposing player for dear life. And look at Van Gundy down at the bottom of his screen. That's Van Gundy just holding on. Afterward, Van Gundy explained that he was simply trying to get between the two guys before any punches were thrown, but when he expounded on the incident years later, he essentially invoked the temporary insanity defense. As he told The Ringer in 2017, I truly have no recollection. They say, what were you thinking? And obviously, I wasn't. Regardless, that image of Van Gundy latched onto Morning's leg epitomized the intensity of the series and eventually became the definitive representation of the Heat Knicks rivalry. It was also hilarious. As Ewing later put it, seeing his diminutive coach sliding down Morning's leg was the funniest thing he'd ever seen in his life. And it was Ewing and his teammates who would get the last laugh too. As expected, the fight resulted in suspensions for both Morning and Johnson, sidelining them for the decisive Game 5. And as it turned out, Morning's absence, specifically on the defensive side, was too great for the Heat to overcome. Thanks to an electrifying Houston, the Knicks put up a series high 98 points on the road in Game 5, punching their ticket to the second round and exacting some retribution for the previous year's conference semis with a 17 point victory. The seventh seeded Knicks, absent their best player, had defeated the heavily favored Heat in a series that, drama wise, somehow managed to exceed its lofty expectations. Although New York fell to the Indiana Pacers in the following round, even with Ewing back in the lineup for most of the series, few teams have ever enjoyed a first round victory so gratifying. Moreover, that series marked the high point of one of the great rivalries in modern basketball history. Following their dramatic playoff showdowns in 97 and 98, the Knicks and Heat squared off in each of the next two postseasons as well, and both of those series also went the maximum number of games. Never before in NBA history had that happened. The Knicks, for the record, won each of those last two playoff matchups, and the two rivals wouldn't meet again in the postseason until 2012. But while none of those turn-of-the-century Knicks or Heat teams were able to make their mark on basketball history by winning a championship, the mutual hatred they had for one another was historic in its own right. Sports rivalries are a dime a dozen, but the kind of rivalry that can turn a coach, by his own admission, temporarily insane? Now that's special. 
Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button.